Okay. And well, I do know Craig, of course, my hero. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that voice that you're hearing is the one, the only Aaron McLeod and Craig Forrest is here and I'm Amy Walsh and this is Footy Prime and that was JC and how he just bounced into the green room. But Aaron, before I say hi, I'm just going to give you a proper intro. So 119 cast for Canada. I know this makes you hugely uncomfortable. Four World Cups, <laughs> two Olympic Games, a bronze and a gold medal in really impressive pro career that was in the NWSL, a lot of the time in Sweden, most recently Iceland, and now the Halifax Tides inaugural signing. So this is huge. It's massive news. And maybe even bigger is the fact that you're here with us on Footy Prime. So thank you so much for coming. And how are you thank doing? You. I'm good. The whining is my dog also just as excited. Um, I'm great. It's been um, a wild week and a half, I gotta say. Um, thank you. <laughs> Bo, Bo, like, uh, is a foam wash? Fear of missing out? Okay. Anyway, uh, it's been wild. Uh, obviously, with my, you know, new son coming into the world, and then the announcement of the Tides. Um, he's wearing a little Tides onesie today, mm. actually. Um, and I'm just so grateful. Like, I am giving out as many shout outs as I can to Diana Matheson, because yeah. um, this was never possible, right? Like, in our careers, this was never a possibility to even think about something like this. And I'm 41 years young and I was pretty, pretty ready to hang up the boots this year. And honestly, like the wildest thing happened this season, halfway through the season, I, I kind of started thinking maybe I could keep playing and um, the tides, I'm so grateful for them because even just having the conversation about continuing my career at home, like ignited a fire in me. I can't even explain. It was like the same fire playing for uh, my country, just the ability to play home in front of family and friends. And um, I I know for so many reasons, I can go off my, um, you know, my activist rant, but um, just to, to be able to be those players that people can see in the backyard, you know, in their backyard or from their same hometown and being those players that, um, you know, we can keep more Canadians at home. Some incredible footballers that has just been like left through the cracks. Like now we have an opportunity to grow their game. Um, and, you know, for me, it's big picture. It's not just signing with the tie. It's, it's the ability to create something um, sustainable, you know, hopefully this is the beginning of so many years where we can just continue to inspire not just young girls, uh, people of all genders of all ages. I mean, and you've always been one to want to inspire. I, I remember, you know, vividly back in 2002 in the tournament that was held in Canada. What was the under 21? It was is now the under 20. It was under 19 for us at first. Oh, under 19, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It keeps changing. Yeah. Yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. And and your personality back then, even at such a young age, you were just absolutely made for the position and made to play professional sports and and, and football. And it, it was just a joy to see you and the rest of that team and how well it did. And, and to see that you can now do it at club level and be visible that way. And this, the growth of the women's game. I mean, from, you know, our point of view, I think it's just absolutely magnificent. Oh, thank you. That means a lot coming from you, Craig. I think when I was in that tournament, all I was worried about was my heat stroke because of how much product I had in my hair, to be honest. But, <laughs> but, uh, um, like, Aaron, was it like, you know, when you wear those old school K ways where it feels like you're trying to make weight for your wrestling match, where you know you're going to be like five or 10 pounds lighter at the end of the training session? Was it the same thing happening, like, oh my on God. your head, where yeah. there was no sweat that was coming out? No sweat at all. I remember one game I had like full on heat stroke and, and oh. Ian, Bra Ian Bridge was like, do you think you know why this is happening? And I was like, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why my, my red and, and white mohawk has nothing to do with it. Bridget. No, I had, I had like three people working on it in the last game. Cause I was like, we're going to make my hair into a maple leaf. I don't know if you remember that. Most yes. people remember the mohawk, but the maple leaf that took a lot of, that took a lot of work, but anyway, I'm digressing, but anyway, um, yes, back to the club comment. Um, <laughs> totally. I'm like, I'm just excited. It was, it's, uh, it's cool to see some of the signings already. Actually, I've been really, um, impressed, not just with quality, like footballers, but also quality people. And 
for me, it goes hand in hand. This is about inspiring on and off the field. Not everyone can play professional sports and that's okay. Um, you know, sports is also about creating a community and getting people together and appreciating the game. Um, so um, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, again, just inspired by the league, the chance to be a part of it, the chance that everybody says, you know, if you can still play, keep playing and Probably with me, they don't think I, you know, you know, I'm taking it maybe too literally, but I, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I love it. Well, speaking of that, we were on the podcast yesterday and I hadn't seen, I was hosting because God damn it, James Sharman, he was missing yesterday as well, which is why I'm hosting today too. <laughs> okay. Um, but I hadn't seen the news. It kind of broke, I think a couple minutes before nine um, yesterday on the, on the Tuesday. And so when Wonger brought it up, um, I thought immediately... And, and I'm really, I apologize to you. I didn't think that you would be playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I apologize to everyone. I apologize to the Tide, to the Northern Super League, no. and to you, Aaron no, it's But I, I love it. So like you in, in Iceland, though, you kind of started your transition to your, your post-player career. You were working kind of in coaching and your advocacy work, which I want to dig into a little bit more after. That's been kind of ongoing throughout your career. Um, so you talked about in other media, your uh, conversation with Shireen about how that conversation with the tide sparked something in you. So can you just yeah. kind of back us up to one, how's your body feeling? Cause I know you've been dealing with a lot of injuries. Yeah. So there's one thing to have the motivation, but then to be able to do the things on a pitch that you want to do, that's kind of a, a different thing. So how did it all come together as to where you were able to say, yes, I'm coming. I'm going to be your inaugural signing. I'm going to be between the sticks as Aaron McLeod, the player. Yeah. Right, right, right. And not be totally horrible. Yeah, I... <laughs> no, I didn't uh, say that. You would no, no, you didn't that. have to. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, so yeah, my first year here, so last, not this season, but last season, I was just full-time playing and started doing some like goalkeeping coaching here and there. And then this year I was doing my like UEFA B. I now have my UEFA B goalkeeping. I have the national B for Canada soccer. So I was oh, just wow. kind of yeah. getting all my licensing and um, not totally certain about being a coach, but I'm like, Okay, why not? Um, and so this season, I was like a player coach. So playing, but also a culture coach, which is what I'm really passionate about. That's like where my heart's at. So um, yeah, and to be honest, like I feel, I'm gonna knock on wood, I, I have never felt my age. I hope I never feel my age. Um, but with my injuries, you know, you know, I've had five surgeries on my right knee. I've had one on my shoulder. Um, and I'm 41 years young. So, uh, you know, like playing, um, basically what ended up happening is um, our team wasn't doing well. So I kind of took more of the coaching. I was starting to run more training, like parts of sessions. And I was like, maybe I can do this. And um, when <laughs> to be like full disclosure, like uh, the ties were like, we want to set up a discovery call. And I also had no idea if they wanted me as a player or as a coach. So I was like, let's just discover this together. And they were like, no, we want you to play. And I was like, yeah, okay, I, of course. Um, so <laughs> did, that, did that take you by surprise? A little bit. I was, I was like, I mean, they were like, we would also love you to coach if you want, like long-term, but for now we want you to play. And um, yeah, so at first I was like a little bit surprised, especially kind of what was happening in, in the season. And then, yeah, like I was saying to Shireen, like, um, it was really uh, like fantastic. I'm always motivated to train. I love training, you know, like um, even though it's horrible for my body to throw it around all the time, like I love it. Uh, that's never been in question, but it was actually the games um, where I started playing more and uh, Did you call your own number as the player coach? You're like, I'm putting myself in. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're going to change the starting keeper. <laughs> um, no, I, it was kind of, well, actually what ended up happening is like the two other keepers on our team went to the U.S. to play for university soccer. So like we had no one else. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's go. And then actually to be frank, my, like I, my keeper coach here is very old school. His name is Raiko. He's from Serbia and he's like, I love the man. Okay. He's fantastic, but he's very old school. And my first game I like played. Okay. And he, uh, this all happened at the same time. I kind of had the conversation with the tides. I was like, this, could I do this? And then he like calls me out. He is like, you played like you were 41. He's like, you're a little bit slow. Rico. And I was like, Damn it. and this, and it like, I couldn't sleep 
And of course, the next game, I like, I think I had like four 1v1 saves. I had a top corner save. I saved a PK. I like stood on my head. And he like, he like wrote back. So he's always kind of joking around and like, it's like the next task. So he goes, rum, pum, pum for the next thing. It's like this <laughs> random. So I get oh, a text. You can't gloss over that. <laughs> what does rum, pum, pum mean? It's like, I don't know. Like we, okay. So he speaks hor like not very good Icelandic and I speak worse Icelandic. And <laughs> he speaks, you know, he's Serbian and English. So our conversations are like a panic. Like no one actually knows what's going on, especially like drills. Anyway, it's a good time, but. When he's kind of like, you know, and moving forward, like whatever, he says, rum pum pum, right? So, and he's always sarcastic. And anyway, so after this game, like he was traveling with a man, so he wasn't with me, but he saw like he watched the game and I just get a text message from him, rum pum pum. And I'm like, you bastard. And I knew, <laughs> I'm like, he mind gamed me this whole week. Um, and after that, like I just, I uh, got better. At, I don't know what I can say on air. So I'm just, that's, you can anyway. Say whatever um, you want, <laughs> okay. Okay. But anyway, after that, I was like, um, just playing sharper and sharper. And to be honest, like I have put in so much energy into the mindfulness side of things. And, you know, we doubt is like so natural for human beings, but now I'm like catching myself. And especially, I think I've been so inspired by my son that like, this boy is not going to catch me having a lack of self-worth or self-belief. And so I'm like, I've been working the last few months and I catch myself on game days when I'm like, I just like challenge my thoughts. Like, why am I doubting myself? I have, you know, I can go through the resume that you said. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, like I'm becoming my own biggest fan finally at 41 and like enjoying playing. And if, if I get in my head and like I'm, I'm self-compassionate instead of hard on myself. And then I've got the tools to get me back into the moment. I've got breathing tools. I've got like opening my peripheral vision, which helps to calm your brain down. Like I know so much more and I'm like, if I'm not going to do it now, you know? And so all, all this, I'm using all this and I'm like, I'm like, why not? Like, fuck, you know, why not play in Canada? Are you kidding me? Like, it's a no brainer if I can do it. And like, I've got all the recovery things, you know, I train for like 90 minutes and then for the rest of the day, I'm just doing recovery and um, I'm figuring it out. But the thing that the thing that has come back, which I did not expect is just like, my heart is like, I'm back to like nerd Aaron, Amy, you can attest to this. I am like, <laughs> if I visualize 10 minutes a day on the bike, like I, I have to train different. I'm not 20, you know, but like research shows that visualizing like your body doesn't know the difference. So if I'm visualizing, I start upping my visualization, which I've already started doing. Like I'm already getting in the hours in a smarter way than before. I'm being smarter with my body. Mm -hmm. And if I'm motivated to do it, like I'm reading this book. Hold on, I've got it right here on my menstrual cycle, you know, like, and um, there's another one for premenopausal, which I think, or perimenopausal, sorry, I think I'm close to. Um, well, yeah, that's yeah. probably where I fall at 47. Yeah, the, and there's another, there's another, there's a next book for this, and and why not? Like, there's there's more and more research coming out for women, but. Um, at this point, why not? Like if I can get 1% and I have to get that 1%, like look at the statistics as like reaction time. There's so many things, um, muscle mass, um, things that just naturally like you lose as you get older. So for me, it's like, okay, if I'm losing this, how am I going to gain this? You know, how my position is going to be better, this and this, my organization, my communication, my leadership skills. Like, so, um, Yes. What was the question? I just went, I just kept going. <laughs> no, I just, you're tremendous. like, bring it back, Eric. Bring it back. <laughs> what was the turn the phrase again? Rum, pum, pum. A rum, pum, pum. The rum, pum, pum. You got to roll, you got to roll the R's. So that's a really, yeah, there it is. There I've it got is, the yeah. French that can kind of mess me up. <laughs> you know, it, makes, it makes me think of uh, Elaine and she's like, yada, yada, yada. And I have yes. the disc. You're like, maybe that's a nice Aaron, you... yada, yada, yada. Totally. Totally. Have you had to adapt your actual game on the pitch as opposed, I know you have with training. But the actual your game going back 20 years and to now with your experience, obviously that's helping you. But have you actually had to change your game at all? Um, not that well, 
Yes and no, right? Like, I think for me, I've kind of been like explosive, aggressive. Um, and I think now I'm a little bit more calculated. Um, obviously, like the goalkeeper role has completely evolved. Um, you know, so I'm having the ball at my feet a little bit more, um, having to get my scans. I think that's the biggest thing that I still like want to keep going towards is a vision and awareness because now I'm like an 11th player and, um, you know, finding the levels of pressure. And um, so, yes, in some ways. And then um, it's weird, like um, training. Yeah. Like before I'd be like, let's do top corners for like an hour and a half. And I'd be like, this is, you know, I used to love it. Now I'm like, I'm going to get in three or four and feel good about it. And then maybe use one in a game, you know? And for me now it's, um, I don't really consider myself ever like a showboat or anything like that, but I think now I do always what I need to do, you know? And I think if I've done a good job, like you almost don't notice me in the game because mm -hmm. I've picked out that ball behind the back line or I've been really smart with like my anticipation has really um, improved, which I think actually ends up like, saving my body a lot more and then i think with the aggression like i said I'm, I'm a little bit more like calculated before i loved going out in like a group of people and and like winning across or punching it away and now it's more like um just you know if there's a 75 percent chance i can go get it i'm gonna go but if it's like less than that i'm gonna stay on my line so i think just being a little bit more i would if i was to critique my own game it was like choosing the moments when to be aggressive um, was something I could always go towards. And now it's like, not that I can't be aggressive. Like I'm doing the block. I, you should have seen me yesterday. I had like bands on every limb, you know, working on my block. <laughs> but um, I, I love a block. Who doesn't love a block, you know? But it's just about using it at the right time. I think too, like, you know, like Craig, you're going to test Like sometimes when there's a defender there, like the rule is you don't go. You don't like engage until your defender's beat. And before I would just go because I was like, I can win this, you know? And so it's just more about getting the job done, if that makes sense. And I'm going to call bullshit on the fact that you're not a showboat. I mean, we just have to go back to that hair in 2002. Well, <laughs> like, please, Aaron McLeod. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of flair, Amy. Come on. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you had it in spades in that hair for sure. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I want to get this in because we have to let you go in a couple of minutes now. You're, you're doing your, your media tour because it's such an exciting announcement, not only for the ties, but yeah. for the Northern Super League. Like you, I talked about it yesterday. Like this, you will be a foundational piece to this league building and, and going forward. So like what excites you about going to Halifax? You'd already been doing some work with EDIA, with the Halifax City Soccer Club. Your sister Megan is already there. Yeah. You have roots there that you've kind of been um, kind of growing with your work with them and in, in, in advocacy and, and in that other stuff with the community. But do you know the soccer community there? Like what excites you about being at Wanderers Grounds um, in front of that vibrant, passionate fan base? Yeah, well, I've learned I learned a lot with my little stint. First of all, the politics in grassroots soccer are not for me. Um, there's a lot of that going on, and I think there's this there's kind of there's a lot of egos involved. But what I like and um, am excited about when it comes to the Wanderers and the Tides is that's like everybody's team. Right. And so it's like an opportunity for everybody to come together. And one of the things that I loved right off the bat when the Tides was kind of advertising and talking about what they're bringing to their community, one of the, the one of the words they used was accessibility. And for me, that's like, you know, my wife and I, we we have this um, football for all here. It's uh, football for athletes with intellectual disabilities. It's something I'm very passionate about. And it's a human right, I believe, to play sport. And unfortunately, we don't always think about everybody, right? Like when I was working with Halifax City Soccer Club, like one girl couldn't play because she uh, needed like, you know, she needed a sports hijab. She needed like um, long tights, long pants. And those weren't accessible to her, right, in her colors or her team colors. And so these are things that, um, you know, I was at a um, Iceland game the other day and there's a whole section of people um, who are uh, visually impaired and uh, they were able to like listen. So they're in a section and they're listening to the commentary of the game so that they can be like with everyone in the surroundings. And for me, like that is one of my priorities, like personal goals going there is that this is for genuinely for everybody, which means it has to be accessible, which means they have to like go the extra lengths as far as like if it's 
um, transportation, if it's like getting the word out or whatever it is. Um, uh, and that was one of the key things working in this community, in the EDIA space, um, people know that in order to make a change, they have to work together. Um, and so it was really fantastic being someone not from Halifax, just people opening their arms and being ready to like tackle these issues because the more people that are playing sports, like it's health, it's mental health. Um, you know, we've got one in three girls dropping out of sports right now. Um, mm -hmm. And there's there's not enough research on gender diverse individuals, which I'm assuming it's way worse. So um, for me, this is an integral piece. Uh, when you've got uh, men's professional leagues and there isn't any for, for women, it, it sends a message, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's no place for me. I have this dream, but where do I go with it? So um, this is for me a, a huge, huge part. And plus, I mean, if you play sports, you become a boss, right? Like whether you're a CEO or whatever you end up doing, like the confidence, the leadership skills, working with yeah. others, um, the sports alone makes makes our communities stronger and better. Yeah, sport creates leaders and you're certainly Absolutely. one. And we're going to let you go now um, Thank you. because you've been so generous with your time. And But please come back whenever you like. And I'm okay, still so looking you. forward to seeing you in Halifax Tides kit and back here in Canada where you belong. Yes. So that's what this is also going to do is to, is to bring players home. Yeah, right? absolutely. I can't Thank wait. You, we're as excited as you are. We really are. It's, uh, it's tremendous. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank folks. And, and congrats it. again to you and Gunny on the baby. Oh, thank yes. you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, <laughs> bye.